Hello there makers, it is Jo from Minerva and today I'm here to do a technique tutorial on how to apply belt loops. I'm going to let you into a little secret. It has been my nemesis for many years applying belt loops. I will make something really carefully, a very handcrafted pair of trousers with a fly and pockets and everything. And then I just can't seem to get the button loops to stay in position and work on my sewing machine. I've been looking into that and I've been looking at lots of different ways of trying to improve my sewing. And I'm gonna share those with you today. What spurred me on to try and improve my technique here is that I've been making the Dawn jeans. I've been using a denim poly cotton and it's quite a thick fabric. So I wanted to make sure that I could get my belt loops to look really neat and professional. Making the belt loops is fine. Um, it's applying them that I always find difficult. So first of all, let's make our belt loops. So you're going to finish one edge of the belt loop. So you can either zigzag that or overlock it or use an overcasting stitch on your machine. And you're going to fold it into thirds. So you're going to fold one third in and then you're going to have the finished edge on top. So you should have a skinny tube or strip. And then you're going to top stitch it all the way down one side and the other side. So try and stay quite close to the edges and then you're going to you need to cut the one belt loop into five separate belt loops. You don't handle and mess around them too much because you'll have cut through the top stitching. And now we can have a look at how to apply them. This is where I start to get a bit stuck because I used to finish my jeans and then put my belt loops on at the very end. So then I would have these two thick layers going through um, my waistband that was also a couple of layers. So on the Dawn jeans, um, the belt loops are applied before the waistband. Even if this isn't the case in the pattern that you're using, you could try this technique as a way to at least get one lot of your stitching down quite accurately. Place your belt loops onto your jeans waist before you put the waistband on. So one belt loop goes tops, lined up with the top stitching on the pocket. Another belt loop goes over the back yoke. So you need to make sure that your top stitching is right sides down. And another belt loop in this case goes 2.5 centimeters away from the side seam not on the side seam, it's just at the side seam. And now you're going to sew these at a particular seam allowance. So you're going to sew at 2.5 centimetres, an inch away down here. So that when you put the waistband on, the waistband will take up 1.5 seam allowance and you'll have one centimetre, which will be what loops up to attach to your waistband. So at least if you can get a few on, You've only got a couple of layers here and then yes, you've got to get the thick lots through the top of the waistband, but at least like 50% of the job is better than trying to get through lots and lots of layers of waistband. After you've constructed your waistband and done all of your top stitching, you'll then be able to complete your belt loops. So you need to fold under a little bit of your belt loop. I've, I've had some clicks on there while I've been working on some of the stuff and it's just given me a nice fold. And now I'm going to bring this up to the top of the waistband. I'm going to have it um, level with the top stitching because that just gives me a little bit more maneuverability under the machine. Now, I've got quite a lot of layers there. I did make my waistband in a lining fabric so that I could sort of try and alleviate some of my belt loop problems that I have because I knew that if I had two lots of denim um, and these fold over denim loops, then I would maybe still re repeat some of the problems I had before. I trimmed out this seam allowance. So when I um, attached the two waistband pieces together, 
I trimmed out the seam allowance and I'm hoping that that will help as well. So you can sew straight across the end of here or you can set your machine to a bar tack and bar tack across the end. If you think your top stitching thread is not going to behave through that many layers of fabric, and I think that's going to be the case for me, I'm going to use my regular sew machine to sew this so that um, I just it's the, the thread is blended in with the colour of the fabric. So I'm going to use a navy blue to bar tack across the end of my belt loops. The positions of the belt loops are over the centre back and for me that's really crucial because I've got a centre back seam which I've sort of adjusted a little bit. I also started my top stitching here so my start and end of my top stitching is there so that I can cover that over and the ones on the back are an inch from the side seam. So let's see how we get on. I think I might start with a side back first. The other thing I'm going to do just before um, I start to sew is I'm going to take this over to my big table and take the clip off and I'm just going to give that a little bash just to make sure that the fabric's really nice and soft. Yay, I've done it. So I used a little bar tack and went across the end of the belt loop so you can't see it. I'm just happier with it without a uh, top stitching thread at the top. The only thing I'll change on the others is I have um, the navy thread on the back, which because I've got uh, a contrasting waistband, that's looking a bit obvious. So um, I'm gonna leave that one in. But for my next one, I'm just gonna put some uh, orange or mustard thread in the bottom. I went forwards and backwards there quite a few times, so I just zigzag, 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 and I've got a really secure belt loop. Only four to go. Right, so I'm going well, but I think the back one is going to be a little trickier because um, I've got a bit more bulk under there. I've got where the yoke meets, and um, I've got the seam of the inner waistband and the outer waistband so I'm going to use a bulky sea made which is like a little chunky piece of plastic it's got two widths a narrow one and a wide one and I'm going to use this under the foot just to make up the thickness of the fabric so that my fabric can run smoothly from there over the belt loop otherwise it's climbing up and then climbing back down again and that's when you get skip stitches and this is how you use it so you um, insert your needle where you're going to start stitching because you're going to lift your foot up and you don't want everything to slip away and then you slide the bulky seam made behind so now the foot is level again and it's parallel start to sew, keep the needle down, lift the foot up and just keep repositioning it. So you're only going to be sewing a few stitches at a time. And I've sewn a very bulky belt loop there as well. And that was using a bulky sea maid. My other little final belt loop tip is if you get any little hairy bits, then I'm, I'm just colouring them in with a sharpie. So any sort of bits showing through. Like here's a little white bit.
Here's a little white bit. And you don't want to cut them off any lower and lower and lower. Do head over to Minerva to check out some more uh, technique tutorials and also take a look at some of our products and inspirational makers. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.